Thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Alice O'Rourke, I'm the Assistant Curator at Art Corps um, and I've been working with the students at the University of Derby um, to support them on their, their degree show, um, which is titled Here and Now. So we've been working to uh, put, together, put together an online exhibition of their works that they've been um, making in the last year. And so today I've got Avalon with me and we're just going to be talking more about your practice and your experiences as a student. Um, so I thought I'd start off by just saying hello to Avalon and if you could just introduce yourself and your practice a little bit. Hello, uh, well my name's Avalon, um, I'm a visual artist on the MA uh, Fine Art at the University of Derby. Um, my practice mainly involves printmaking, that's my specialism mm -hmm. and I'm really interested in the um, combining of the sutra the two subjects of art and science and the possibilities and the creative possibilities that can happen mm -hmm. when you when you combine the two subjects oh, amazing is that is that so is science something that you um studied or uh you know um, not yeah. really i mean <laughs> it all started like i just wanted i felt like there was a lot of subjects that were covered really repeatedly within yeah. the fine art there, there was a lot that was covered multiple times sure. and I saw I, I've always been interested in the natural world and then I started to discover um, artists such as Rob Kessler who yeah. works with microscopy and then I had the opportunity to work with a microscope myself oh. and I realized that this wasn't explored a lot within art and it's something I really wanted to take forward oh, and just create my own spin on it. Did, did you have access to a microscope at the university or was that something that you um, um i was lucky enough um my tutor roger brown got me in touch with um he was called oh, i can't remember his last name he was called david mm -hmm. he is he is one of the professors on forensic anthropology oh, and photography oh, yeah. and he used to work with the photography department um in the fine arts and um he was very very kindly um allowed me to go and use the microscopes in the forensics department initially it was like microscopes just bringing up my own slides just taking pictures of specimens yeah well then it sort of developed after a few years of working with them into being very very fortunate and be able to explore an electron microscope um in the department and that just opened up a whole new world I was just very fortunate in that way. Yeah, that's that's fantastic that there's that like yeah multidisciplinary approach across the uni, and it's really nice to yeah, yeah. not just be like within that like, those confines of the fine art department. I guess that that brings us to the next question about why you chose to study at, at the University of Derby. Well, I mean, I remember going back to the start of the BA, seems like years ago now, um, looking around a few unions. When I went to Derby, it was just like a feeling I got, like a gut feeling. Everybody seemed kind Aww. and nice. It was just like, a, you know, you have that intuition feeling. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really silly, but I had a really bad cold on the day of my interview. Okay. And like all the, I'd had this cold going through all the other uni interviews and I'd had to wait for ages. But like, I remember Roger Brown and Carl Robinson noticed I had a cold and they were like, you can come first and you can go home. Oh. And then I got an email from Carl. Uh, he's, he used to be head of BA Fine Art. And he was like, I hope you're feeling better just to let you know we've accepted you, you've got a place. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was just a good feeling I got from just the campus, the surroundings, the facilities. Yeah. And everything. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that, I mean, that, that level of care is really important when you're studying. And that's really nice to hear that the university supported you in that way. Um, yeah, it sounds silly, but I've never forgot it in all my <laughs> yeah yeah it sounds like it had a really uh yeah lasting impression um i guess just yeah thinking about your work then um that you've you've created for the master's show um i know you talk about this idea of like alternative utopian realms and that's really fascinating i just wondered if you could talk to us about where that interest came from was it an artist was it a book or was it a conversation that you had well it was sort of um 
it was sort of a um, development of working with the microscopic world. And again, one artist I'm heavily inspired with is Rob Kessler. Okay. He's a professor in London. Um, mm -hmm. He he's been creating new work with um, with. Uh, Oh gosh, I can't remember. It's so complicated. Mm -hmm. He he works a lot with um, electron microscopic imagery, mm -hmm. but he's been um, working with this new process with a professor um, called electrospectrometry, where it's it's something like that, where mm -hmm. um, they are colouring um, electron microscopic images by isolating the elements in the specimen oh, wow. from the periodic table and he's like translating that into an artist and translating that scientific process into mm -hmm. his artistic mind mm -hmm. and he described them as like micro brujelian man landscapes you know like the dutch painter right yeah like yeah. peter um and he was like he was referencing like jg ballard and his mm -hmm. like predictions and it just made me think of it i sort of translated his his thoughts into my own work but put a spin on it my own way where it's like i'm quite interested in this idea of the microscopic world being this unseen world that can't be accessed by mm -hmm. that is just this other realm and then i thought well we can combine the seen and the unseen mm -hmm. and create this new sort of these landscapes these new like realms that can be that can create narratives to the viewer and be interpreted differently by the viewer mm -hmm. so that that's what sort of if that makes any sense well, very good yeah definitely um, like so so obviously this has really heavily informed what you've created for the for your master's degree show so do you want to tell us a little bit more about that i know you've got some lovely artworks behind you <laughs> okay so <laughs> these are the three um images mm -hmm. created um so this one at the very far end is called sacred mm -hmm. then this one is called mist um and then this final one here is called river Mm -hmm. So if you can see, I've sort of what I've done is I've taken photographs of the scene landscape, which is like the bridge, and then here I've like ed digitally edited the um, microscopic images, like electron microscopic images, into the work, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sort of merged them together. Um, and then translated the, I, initially I created like digital collages mm -hmm. and then these digital collages were then translated into um, the solar plate printmaking process, which is something that I've worked with like from the start of my bachelor's degree. Okay. And I just, I'm fascinated by that process because it's, it's like you can create so many different images from one image okay. and it almost okay. relates to cell theory and the idea that multiple cells cells can be created from a single cell sure. so it's sort of <laughs> that's how i translate it into my work yeah. anyway tell me about how you kind of learned about that and who introduced you to that was it through the university or through this artist that the you're... solar plate painting. yeah yeah oh um well um the solar plate printing um the the university introduced me to that um mm -hmm. i was working with that from um like my second year of my ba when i first started exploring microscopy mm -hmm. it was introduced to me by the printmaking technician uh martin leadham at the university um mm -hmm. because it was a way of um just creating more of a delicate fin finish to images mm -hmm. Microscopic images, you want to retain that detail, and that's something you can do with solar plate printing. Mm. And it's it starts off by you have to digitally manipulate the images using Photoshop, um, and then you have to bit map them, get the right amount of uh, dots, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. once you get it right, you can retain so much detail. And the, the process is always quite painterly in a way as well, because mm -hmm. you can apply the ink you can be really experimental with it yeah and that's what i really loved about the process 
and this new digital layering of taking photographs of the scene landscape merging in with the unseen landscape this is just mm -hmm. something i sort of discovered myself that yeah. a little experiment um and it worked really <laughs> yeah it sounds like it's really interesting yeah how you kind of refer to that as painterly and also there is there is that real strong evidence of it being really scientific and very like precise as well um which obviously is really important yeah. for your work um so i guess um just thinking about your yeah your experience being a student during this last year um yeah making work in a pandemic how, how have you found that and um yeah your experience of that oh well <laughs> that's interesting i mean to be to be honest um what i mean it, initially i was like oh my gosh what am i gonna do because this to create this type of work you need access to studios yeah. luckily i was able to get into the studios at the uni mm -hmm. with obviously social distancing um yeah. specific times mm -hmm. um but i found a lot of people um like relate this work to the pandemic even though it actually wasn't initially meant to be related to it mm -hmm. but it sort of fits in with the times yeah like with yeah. the micro overtaking some unseen overtaking this landscape we know Definitely. um but it wasn't intentional but it sort of works yeah but yeah being a student in the pandemic it's hard because when like when you're a student you always want to be in the studios you always want to be creating as an artist yeah. and when that becomes kind of restrictive it's like um like you can't create inky paintings in your flat because you've got a deposit to keep <laughs> yeah. stuff like that um yeah but i think like you sort of adapt and us as a fine art group us as a collective as students <laughs> have adapted our own work and we've all done really well and managed to create something that was great yeah no that sounds yeah it's really yeah inspiring to hear how you've all um i guess focus on this idea of like being together even though you literally can't you know be close together there yeah. still feels like there's that collective way of working and that that's obviously a concept within the the whole master show um hazel was yeah. telling me about the title of here and now and yeah thinking about even though you're not you know physically here you are you are all, all together um yeah so that's i mean it was in. yeah it was like oh when we did our opening night like 60 people 56 60 mm -hmm. people turned up to yeah. support us and it was just even though we weren't there it was such a like a really special moment yeah like we it just flowed really well and i personally am not great at talking or speaking out to an audience or anything mm -hmm. but we all because we showed a little slideshow and everything of the work and uh, they recorded it and i looked back on it i was like wow we did a really good job of that yeah, you should be really <laughs> proud Aww. so i guess my last question for you um is what is your best advice for anyone thinking of studying art or practicing art um yeah can you think of anything <laughs> um oh well, yeah i think fine first of all work hard you have to love it you have to really love it and live it and mm -hmm. um, find something you're really interested in mm -hmm. and something that really that's something you'll never get board of exploring yeah. and just take just introduce it into your work and let the work take you forward and develop and just don't be too constricted just be open-minded explore mediums explore everything mm -hmm. um, but work hard and really enjoy what you're doing because it's really worth it in the end when you've created that work and you think wow i've done this yeah. um I'd say anybody who wants to do a fine art degree, do it because it's the best thing I ever did. <laughs> oh, I know that's amazing. Thank you so much, Avalon. Um, so yeah, I guess we're all working at the minute towards launching your your master's show online. Um, so that will be launching on the 31st of March um, via kind of Art Core Gallery web Art Core Gallery website. So um, yeah, keep your eyes and ears open for more kind of details about that. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you so much for having this conversation with me and sharing more about your processes. It's 
it's really um yeah fascinating to hear about how yeah you've been inspired by that as well no um, thank you thank you thank you for having me oh thanks so much Avalon.